April 2nd. And I thought that since it's April and April is Autism Awareness Month, I thought maybe I could talk about Levi to some of you guys that um, don't quite know Levi's story. Um, Levi was born in August 1995. When he, they induced with Levi and he still wasn't ready to come out, they sent me home. And um, that night after I'd been home, I went into labor and um, Levi's dad and I went to the hospital. And it was, I guess, a fairly normal delivery. I had Tony, my middle son, by cesarean. And they say that once you have one cesarean, you usually will, you know, any verse after that, you'll have a cesarean with those two. But my doctor didn't think I'd had to do that. Um, but at some point, Levi's vitals were doing something. Now, I had him normal, um, not cesarean, just a regular birth. But at, at one point, he did have some problems. And his vitals were doing something that I guess was they had to check it. They had to check check him. So they put some kind of a monitor in me and it if you ever you know, he needs a haircut bad right now. And I was gonna do it last week before church and it never happened. Uh, the week before and I didn't do it for church. And then last week this past Sunday was Easter, so we didn't go. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, he needs a haircut. But when his hair is cut and shaved in the back, which is what he's all, that haircut he keeps, shaved sides and a little bit thicker on top, and I do what they call a swoosh, just sort of the front goes up. Um, Buddy went to um, a bar the barber in Splendora that he always used to use Wayne and um, and before uh, and he gave him that haircut now I I do it at home so I'm not as good as a barber but I get that same little swoosh up there in the front and it stands up and he's always had a, a haircut like that and um when his hair is shaved you can see where the monitor was sort of the way the nurse described it to me was sort of like they screwed it into his i mean not into his like his skull i guess so he's got a scar there it almost looks like a burn it's not a burn though it's a scar from something being the monitor being screwed in so anyway um, he came along and he was the most unhappy baby. Unhappy. He cried all the time. All the time. And... At some point, you're a mom, and in my case, I had two boys prior to you know, leave us the baby. And I knew he wasn't hitting, well, I also worked in daycare off and on. Most of my, I've worked in daycare even when I was a teenager in the school work program. Um, I knew he wasn't hitting milestones like he was supposed to do, you know. He wouldn't reach out for a toy if you shook it in front of him, you know, a little rattle in front of him. He didn't reach out to get it. Um, he, he had one eye that pulled, dystrophia, 
it pulled, you know, like a, like a cross sight wanted to pull into the corner to his nose. And, um, so by the time he was, I guess it was his, about his four months checkup when we went to the doctor, I told Dr. McPherson, I said, something's wrong. He's not doing things that he, and y you know, you, you like sort of like live in denial. Like I knew something was wrong, but I kept trying to think like, well, tomorrow will be different. Tomorrow he's gonna roll over. Tomorrow he's gonna scoop, you know, on his tummy. There's all, he just didn't do any of these things. He just cried and was miserable. And at first we always thought he was gassy or always giving him little gas drops and nothing would help. I, holding him sometimes didn't even help. He was just an unhappy child. So Dr. McPherson knew something was wrong. And he set me up with a neurologist for Levi and an eye doctor. The eye doctor actually came first. That appointment was, was with TSO in Humble, and we went, and by the time Levi was five months old, he was wearing these perfect little round glasses, little strap that went back, and oh my gosh, they were little Coke bottles, so, so thick. And we got that done. And, but he still had the one eye that pulled. So at some point, we seen a different type of eye doctor that, um, no, wrong. Yes, we did. We seen a specialist that, um, they would put drops in his eyes and wait for it to dilate and then they would do things and look you know with the little machine thing it was really hard because he was little and i'm having to hold his head and things but it finally at one point they patched they put a patch over his good eye to strengthen his bad eye and for the most part it did and after that he just went back to wearing his glasses. Um, they may have changed the prescription on him. I can't remember that detail or not, but he, Levi, wear, Levi today wears glasses when I make him, but he doesn't have to wear them on his regular all day long things. When he's on his computer, which is hardly never anymore. He used to be on his computer all the time. Now he's not. Um, and when he reads, which when he was on his computer was basically the only time he read and because he doesn't read, he has word recognition. And it's amazing to me that I didn't teach him these things. These were things self-taught. When he liked a certain song, he would say, find me, um, I don't know, some Willie Nelson song. Let's just say, he would say, um, I can't, I can't, I can't even think of a Willie Nelson song. Okay, he would say, find me Amazing Grace. And I would say, Okay, Amazing Grace is this song right here. On his computer, like if he put a disc in, like a, I bought him, let's just say I bought him a musical disc. He would stick it in his computer. And then it would pop up, you know, all this list of songs. And he would say, which one is Amazing Grace? And I would say, it's this one right here, number four. And for, you didn't ever have to tell him twice. From then on, he knew a-M-A-Z-I-N-G-G-R-A-C-E. 
he knew those letters spelt amazing grace. Sometimes, if you wrote it in a specific way, your penmanship on a word, completely away from that, like let's not, we're not even looking at the computer right now, I've got a piece of paper in front of me and I write Amazing Grace. If I write it a certain way, he could make it out. But if I wrote it a different way, he couldn't. Because it was the word recognition. He doesn't really know how to read, but he just remembers what he sees. And he knows that is Amazing Grace. And it, it was like that with every um, Irohan. It was like that with every music CD that I ever bought him. That's just how he, he was. Um, but that's after he got older. But when he was little, after we seen the eye doctor and did the eye stuff and the patch over the eye and all this kind of stuff, all of this stuff was sort of all being done at the same time, he had his neurologist visit. And I cannot remember that man's name. I can remember Dr. McPherson was his doctor, pediatrician, because that was the same pediatrician Buddy and Tony had. And Dr. Schramm was his eye doctor in Cleveland. Um, I cannot remember his pediatrician's name. But I can tell you that he was down in Houston and he wore cowboy boots. And Levi was in love with cowboy boots. And he would get down on his little, he would squat and just look at his boots as the man would stand there and talk to me if he you know, moved his foot or did something. Levi was just watching them cowboy boots. Um, and I have a really cute picture of him in school after he was in school in pre-K. And they have, you know, all the, the dress up play stuff for the centers. And he's wearing some red cowboy boots. And he's in little shorts and these little red cowboy boots. He loved cowboy boots. I don't know why. Maybe because his daddy wore cowboy boots. I don't know. That's all that his dad, uh, Buckshot, ever wore cowboy boots. Um, so, when we went to the neurologist the first time, he said, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's let it sort of ride. Let it play out. He's been to the eye doctor, and almost instantly, the day he put glasses on, some of his balance came and the reaching for things came and that made me sad to know that more than likely the crying all the time was probably like headaches and things because his eyes were so messed up but because it's like almost instantly you've got this happy little boy that didn't talk he didn't talk we rode on with the neurologist every couple, you know, I don't know, every six months or something, I don't know, can't remember now. But at some point he said, okay, you're, he's gonna be delayed. He got off to a rough start and he's gonna be delayed. But that's, we're not gonna label him with anything, which I didn't want him labeled. I wanted him to, okay, if he's delayed, that's fine. If he's six months old, and it takes him till he's one year old to do things. That's fine. Let him be. Let him run six months behind. I, I remember telling mom when we got in the car one day, leaving the neurologist. And this was when, after he'd already had a couple of visits with him, and we were already sort of getting beyond saying that he was just going to be behind, and we knew there was something else couldn't put your finger on it and they do not label and I don't know if things have changed since then but they would not label a child autistic until they were in school because that's where you see their learning abilities or disabilities and you start seeing the twerk the little kinks the little you know cur uh, little um, they're little oddities. 
and uh, the ticks and, and things. You start seeing that once they get into school. Um, it's not as noticeable when they're young because they're still babies. And then with Levi, he was behind because of his situation with needing glasses. And I remember the neurologist asking me about my pregnancy. And I said it was fine. It was a normal pregnancy. I, you know. I don't drink, I don't smoke. Um, and he said, well, what about, he goes, are, do you have your husband? Your, I don't even know, he said, do you, are you married? Do you have a, a partner? I don't know how he said it. And I said, well, I have a husband, Levi's dad. And um, he said, how did the, how is, I don't remember how he were, wanting to know how my marriage was. And I'm like, Mary, is normal? I said, it's normal. I said, we, we, uh, neither one of us drink. And I thought it was like physical things. And I'm like, neither one of us drink, um, or, or, or smoke. And I don't drink. My husband does drink occasionally, but he's not a, an alcoholic or something. Um, and he said, I don't remember how he said it. I don't remember the words he used. But Mama said she had a rough she had a rough pregnancy. He's she's always walking on eggshells around him. Um, you never know what kind of mood he's gonna be in. She, she just Mama just said these things, and I just looked at her thinking, "Don't tell this man about my marriage." But that's what's what he was wanting to know those things because he said you don't realize and I'm say I'll say this now as anybody out there that has a daughter I don't have too many young people that watch my page I just don't but I will say if you have a daughter or a granddaughter that's in a marriage and she's pregnant your body puts off so many different chemicals and everything going on in your head and it's amazing what our bodies do but basically what he tried to basically say was leave I fed off of that and there's a possibility that that caused but anyway leave I didn't speak um, it, he was almost three and I called the special needs program in Cleveland I, you know, drove a school bus for Cleveland. Leave I rode the bus with me, strapped in a little car seat right behind me in the seat to the right. Usually had girls fighting to sit with the baby. Can I give him his bottle? Can I give him his bottle? Um, can I, you know, give him a snack as he got older? Give him a snack. Give him a, give him a sippy cup. But he rode on that bus with me. He had to have like two rounds of shots or something before he could be allowed on the bus. So, anyway, I called the special needs program. It was Heidi Bassett. I loved her. Oh my gosh, I loved her. And she said to come, and I went up and got paperwork and all kinds of stuff and got it all filled out and taken in. But until he started the pre create the pre-k program when he was three she said until he comes to school do not give him anything until he says some kind of word resembling what it's supposed to sound like if he wants a cookie make him say something as close to cookie as he can get it and and it went for anything you know whatever he's wanting make him say it as close to sounding to that word as he could get. Oh, that was a struggle, but we did it. Now he doesn't shut up. Um, and then he started school. And we continued to see the neurologist for a while. And then it got to a point... Okay, then he started seeing an autistic doctor at Cleveland Pediatrics. Um... 
I really liked her and he's seen her up until he turned 18. And she said she would continue to see him as long as it was all autism related. But if it became more adult, uh, not to do with autism, just regular, you need to see the doctor or something. She couldn't see him for that. But he could continue to come to the pediatrics clinic and see her for his autism. But eventually, she had her main office was in Livingston, and eventually she, I don't think she's in Cleveland anymore. I, I, I don't think that that office. So now he sees the doctor that me and him share doctors. We share the same doctor. But um, I remember leaving the neurologist's office one of the last times we went, scared. And Mama said that, I said something about, I just, I'm so scared I'm going to be changing, changing diapers when he's an adult. And I'm going to tell you something. I think the parents that have a child To the degree of the disability to a degree that they can't take care of themselves that a parent is feeding and changing diapers and to your you know 30 something or 40 something child those are the strongest people I know I deal with tantrums um, like what you would see a, a child, a baby doing or a toddler. I deal with those all the time. Um, I've dealt with his arm. He throw his arm up in the air and I'll say, are you going, do you think you're going to hit mama? And I have to get strong and Mama will hit you back if you hit me. And Mama's going to hit you harder. Because I might be chunky and heavier than I need to be. But I'm not a very tall and big person. And he towers over me. And if he was ever really angry, he could hurt me. I'm sure he could. But the thing is, Levi has no sense of to put power behind the punch type stuff. So... You know, I don't know how much he could really hurt me, but he's big enough that he could. He just doesn't have the mental capacity to do what his mind is mad at me and he wants to do. And, you know, I have the times when he's mad and he says, I'm, I'm leaving. And I will say, well, where are you going? And he goes, I'm going down the road. And I said, well, I... Be careful. Do you need to take something to drink? I can't go on the road. I'll get run over. So he knows he can't go on the road, but he's going to threaten me that he's going to go on the road. He's, um, he loves everybody. He talks to everybody. He remembers everything. If I called him out here right now and said, I can't remember his high school teacher but he can remember her I can't remember a whole lot of his teachers he had good teachers and he always had pretty good teachers till he was in junior high he had a horrible junior high teacher that woman rolled around in a rolly chair wasn't even I thought when I first met her during the summer before school started I took up some papers up there to her to the classroom and to meet meet her and take some stuff in that I needed to drop off of his and she had two desks at the head of the room and then there's desks out here but her two teacher desks she had two of them and she rolled out from behind one and got the papers from me 
and we talked for a couple. She sort of rolled back to that desk and we talked for a second. Then she rolled over to the other desk. And when I left there, I thought, I didn't ask her what happened because I was thinking she was in a wheelchair. And then I said something to somebody, to an aide that I was friends with about his teacher in a wheelchair. She goes, she's not in a wheelchair. That's her desk rolling chair. And she doesn't ever hardly get out of it. She rolls. And I thought to myself, she doesn't need to be a teacher. If she can't walk and deal with these special needs children and get up and help them, she, I don't know. I just felt like she, she wasn't a good teacher. He uh, had, you know, he loves, or he did, he sort of went through the Chef Louis phase when, you know, Chef Louis from the Little Mermaid movie. Well, Chef Louis could be any one of those. If you got a, bought a dish towel that had a chef on it holding that sign that says menu, that was, was Chef Louis. In his mind, that was Chef Louis. Any chef, any little ceramic chef, you know, with the apron, the chef hat, that was Chef Louis. And one of the first things that I found for him that I could have afford at the time now since then he's got he's got little ceramic chef louis and different things he even had one that was sort of big once that had the chalkboard that you could write on it he just wanted it for his room um i think that one got broke at some point but i got him a he wanted a dish towel set It'd come with the pot holder and some dish towels that had a chef on he took that pot holder to school with him one morning. And, you know, kids with disabilities tend to have, you know, they have some breakdowns, some meltdowns sometimes. And I got a call from an, uh, somebody that worked at the school but was not in that department and told me that she had taken his, his little pot mat his little mat away from him and told him he couldn't have it till he went till it was time for the bus and they said he's having a horrible meltdown and she won't give it back to him and um you're not working with regular children that you can have a conversation and make them understand things and I was mad. And uh, then there was once a aide when he was in the fourth grade that grabbed him by the shirt back here and it pulled his shirt, the front of his shirt up and she held it so tight that he ended up having like a little burn mark across his neck. And the teacher, when I got there that afternoon to, um, pick up my kids on my bus and he was picked up on a special needs bus um i don't think daddy was driving his bus then i think it was still diane miss diane but his teacher come to my bus and she said i almost went to jail today over levi and i said what happened and i thought it was gonna be something funny and then she told me and she says when he gets home you're gonna see it you better know i made a little fuss over that too you don't hurt a child like that and she said you know Levi didn't stop when the woman told him to stop he kept going but you could have grabbed a hand or an arm but instead she just reached out and grabbed the back of his shirt of his collar and she said it left him she said I was furious when I seen it and she said I almost went to jail I made such a and so I made a not a fuss, but I took care of things. But um, right now, my problem with Levi, I don't know if he's in that teenage, you know, he's 29 years, he'll be 29 in August. It's almost 30, guys. He's a big guy. If he doesn't want to get up, he won't get up. 
I have to threaten him with things. If, I, if you don't get up right now and go brush your teeth, I am taking that tablet and you won't see it. These are the things that go on all day long. If you don't stop doing that, then I'm going to take this movie that you're watching right now and I'm going to delete it. And you're not going to have it. Well, I've done that before. Thing is with Dish, it goes to the trash and then from the trash you can restore it. As long as you don't delete it from trash. So I've threatened him with that before. He's He got spankings when he was little um, for some things because there were some things he knew. So he has been disciplined. I tried to discipline him the same way I would discipline my other two boys. I didn't treat him any different than them. He was different and there were things that I would give in to because of that. Like I can't make him do this because he can't physically or mentally do this. But there were other things he could do and there were like his chores. He's got chores. He takes the garbage to the dumpster. That's a chore. He has to, he's horrible about it, but he'll bring his stack of paper to the living room and he knows I hate it because after a while he's moved not only his stack of paper to write the list on, but now he's brought a garbage bag in there to sit beside him because the garbage bags are what collects the list. And then he saves them. He's got four. Um, 13 gallon garbage bags filled to the, they can't hold another thing tied in, in his bedroom that's his list collection and he knows that at some point I'm going to come in and I'm going to say I can't do it again if I see these lists if I see that bag if I see this if I see that it, you're going to go to your room and you're not going to come out. If you want to draw a list, you're going to do it only in your bedroom. And there's those things. And then he'll have a fit about something and we'll have to deal with that. Right now, I'm trying my hardest to get him active. He doesn't care if he jumps on the trampoline anymore. Last year, I had to force him to the pool two or three times during the summer. It's not like he's sleeping. It's like a kid that's playing a video game, except he's watching the movies or he's on his tablet. He watches his entire family's videos. He can tell me things that are going on. We all, as much as, as close as we are and we love each other, I don't have time to sit and watch Lester's video, Jamie's video, Jake's video, Lissa's blog, Megan's blog, Ellie's videos, Stephanie's videos, Stephanie and Buddy, Daddy's, I catch Daddy's more often than I don't. I see a lot of stuff of Jake just because it's on Facebook and stuff pops up on my Facebook. But to go into YouTube and click on a one of my, and I've subscribed to all of them, but I don't, and see, when he's on YouTube, on his tablet, he's looking at it through catching up with Kim. It's it's you know when YouTube comes up it's it's my page and then he's going to, so it looks like I've been watching all these things but I haven't it's been him he can tell me everything going on because he's watching them and I'll see him laughing or he'll be talking and I'll say who are you talking to and he goes I'm telling Stephanie something because he's watching her video and now he's telling her something but he's just in the living room talking so We've been walking every afternoon, and I told him we're gonna start walking twice a day. I'm gonna make him walk in the mornings when there's nothing going on and we're home. We're gonna have our breakfast, we're gonna sit for a little bit, and then we're gonna walk. And I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the whole lap, the whole thing. I'm gonna go up Mom and Dad's driveway and around, around LE's and come down Lester's driveway and back home. But I've also ordered him a treadmill that I can keep in the living room I hope it's going to be compact enough and easy enough to stand up and get out of the way when we're like Sunday dinners and stuff I don't want to be rolling things all over the house that we can lower it down and he can I don't care if he walks through. the thing is I was going to get a pad those new things, it's a new trend, the walking pad, there's no electricity. You move it yourself with your feet. 
but Levi will shuffle. And I don't think you can just slowly walk like this and get anything done physically. So with an electric treadmill, I can set it at a speed. You know, not something where he's running, but something that he's got to pick up his feet and move. And I can start him out like, you're going to do this for 10 minutes. And do that for a week. And then build him up to a 20-minute walk. And the thing is, with the treadmill, he can st stand right there and still walk and watch and know. Because um, Levi has high blood pressure. His actually blood pressure has always run high, even when he was little. His blood pressure ran a little higher than normal, but sometimes it's it, it he'll be acting a little bit off to me, and I'll say, "Let's take your blood pressure," and it'll be really high. And I go ahead and I give him a blood pressure pill, one of his clonidines, or half of one, and then I'll wait about an hour and take his blood pressure again, and then it's usually back down in some kind of a normal range. But it scares me when that happens, and. I've got to get him active. Um, I can control to a degree his food. I mean, when I'm outside and stuff, he's locked out of the pantry, but he has built, you know, freezer in the refrigerator. I can lock them, but I have a lock for them. But it means he can't get the tea out. He can't get the lemon out to put to make lemon water because when he's drinking tea, or he's drank, a, um, like if we've been somewhere now this morning. I was out this morning. Um, had to go get my taxes done. I brought him back a, a hamburger from Waterburger. So now he'll have that big, well, these are mediums. They're big to me. They're mediums at Waterburger. So from here on, he'll drink that and then I'll make him drink water. I'll make him drink like at least three glasses of lemon water, sort of to flush. There's some things I can control, but some of it, it's so hard and it's exhausting. And you guys say, you, know, you take such good care of Levi and I fail him every day. I fail him because I'm not making him I can tell myself you can't make him if he doesn't want to get up he ain't gonna get up you can't make him get up you can't stick him with the prod you can't you know with the electric cow prod make him move if he doesn't but I can't I can't sit back and just let him sit there and be so sedentary that he becomes ill so y'all have to pray that I can get him moving so yeah. anyway I wanted to uh, just talk to y'all about Levi and um, it's autism awareness and he was uh, five when they um, labeled him PDD, Pervasive Developmental Disorder. Basically, something's wrong, but we don't know what it is. And then he was a couple of years after that when it just went to straight autism. And uh, that's my Levi. So um, I love you guys. I'm going to go. Just remember Autism Awareness is this month. Try not to judge these babies when you see them. You never know. I always tell mom, I said, you know, people, when we go into Walmart sometimes and Levi wants to go get a drink before we even get into the store. We've come through the big doors at Walmart and he's headed to the Coke box to get a Coke out of it. And I see people because sometimes they don't, they don't know. He's just this, he looks like a normal guy, but there is a look on Levi's face. Always tells you he's, I would never use the word blank. 
but he's unaware that he just sort of cut in front of somebody to get a drink and he didn't say excuse me um, but I, I think people when he first walks up don't know what to think and then I realize they they'll look at me and I'll say I'm so sorry. Levi did you say excuse me and they'll say oh it's okay and then you realize, well, they now realize, but they didn't realize at first. And he was just this big old guy that cut through there to get a Coke and didn't say nothing to nobody. So just always, I would say, just always give people the benefit of the doubt before we get all upset. I am I do it too, but I try so hard not to. Because I have Levi, it's made me more, more aware of hold it in a minute before you make I never want to say that I judge. I try so hard. I do not want ever want to be considered judging somebody. I judge them. But you know, before we think, well, wasn't he an ASS? There may have been something else to the whole situation. Anyway, I don't know. I'm rambling. Almost an hour of rambling. I hope you guys don't mind because I'm not going to edit. And I'm just going to stick it out there. But I love you guys. God bless y'all. Remember, this is April, Autism Awareness, but we always need to be aware regardless of um, the month. So, love you. Bye, guys. Katie, I'm trying to do a video.